This video is on process costing with no beginning inventory, but where materials have been added at the beginning of the process and conversion is added evenly throughout. Additionally, when we do the journal entry at the end, we're going to move the inventory from one department to another department instead of to finished goods inventory. So let's go ahead and take a look at the spreadsheet. You can see I have this set up similarly to the other spreadsheet that we did, but there are some more columns, so let's take a look at it. We have a column for units, a column for material dollars, a column for conversion dollars, and a column for total dollars. We have beginning units, and those are all gonna stay zeros for right now, plus what we add. So let's go ahead and add 700,000 units into beginning production during the period. We're also going to add materials of 175,000. And remember, those materials are gonna be added at the very beginning of the process. So for example, this would be like starting to make 700,000 gallons of gasoline and we take all of the crude oil and we put it into process all at once. The conversion costs are going to be 196,500 and just as a reminder, conversion costs are everything other than direct materials in the manufacturing facility of a process costing company. So this is the direct labor and all of those overheads, indirect materials, indirect labor, rent, taxes, utilities, electricity, maintenance, etc. Everything other than direct materials that happens inside that factory. So the total dollars that we have to account for are 371,000. Now, normally if we had beginning inventory, we would at that point add these together to determine everything that we have to account for. What we've added during the period is everything we have to account for since there was no beginning inventory. Now we have to look at the end of the month and determine how many were transferred out. We had 625,000 units transferred out. That means that there are 75,000 left in ending inventory, and that is just taking the total we have to account for minus what was transferred to the second department. 75,000 units are still on the plant floor. The next step is figuring out the cost per equivalent unit with respect to materials and with respect to conversion so that we can multiply it out and figure out the amount of money attached to those 625,000 units that are transferred to the second department and how much money is attached to the ending inventory. So let's start out with materials. If all materials are added at the beginning of the process, then at the end of the month, those 75,000 units have 100% of the materials added to them. Okay, so we added all of the materials to all 700,000 units. The ones we transferred out are 100% complete with respect to materials, but the 75,000 units in ending inventory are also complete with respect to materials. So if we look at how many we started and completed during the month, that is 625,000. We started all of them this month, we completed this many, and then my ending whip is 75,000 units, and we have to multiply it by the degree of completion. This is important. We get 75,000 units. When we add all those together, we have 700,000 equivalent units with respect to materials. This should make sense. We added materials to all 700,000 units, so we have equivalent units of 700,000 with respect to materials. The cost per equivalent unit then, we wanna take the total costs that we have to account for and divide it by total equivalent units, and we get 25 cents a unit. Remember, if you're doing this by hand to take that out six decimal places, in this case we have a nice round 25 cents per unit. So let's figure out how much cost is attached to each of the two types of inventory we have now, the stuff that is completed and transferred out and the stuff remaining in ending whip. We're going to use 
the number down here when we're multiplying. Get in the habit of using this number. It'll become important later on. We have 625,000 units that we started and completed times 25 cents a unit. That gives us 156,250 material dollars that have been transferred out. And we have 75,000 equivalent units in ending whip times that 25 cents a unit. That is 18,750. Now I've added a row for a check figure, so here's another way you can check this. We multiplied both of those out to get a good figure. So let's take the total amount of money that we have to account for, subtract out the amount that we're transferring to the next department, and then also subtract out the ending whip. Now if we've done this correctly, we should have accounted for all the money, and therefore there will be no dollars left. And that's good, we have no dollars left, so we've done this correctly. Let's move on to conversion costs. We're going to say that these units are 40% complete with respect to conversion. Those are just the units in the ending inventory. Of course, the units that are transferred out to the second department are 100% complete with respect to conversion because they're 100% complete overall. Let's come on down here to equivalent units. We started and finished 625 units. Make sure you're picking this up from the units column, not from the material dollars column or the conversion dollars column. These have to be in units. We have 625,000 units that have been started and completed. Now with respect to ending whip, ending whip with respect to conversion, we're gonna pick up those 75,000 units that are left in ending whip but they are only 40% complete. So our equivalent units are 30,000. So the total equivalent units with respect to conversion are 655,000 equivalent units. Again, we're going to divide our costs that we have to account for, divided by the total equivalent units, and that gives us 30 cents a unit. Remember, if you're doing it by hand, to take those out six decimal places. In this case, we have a nice round 30 cents per unit. Now let's do our multiplication again. So we've got 625,000 units from down here times our 30 cents a unit, again from down here, and that gives us 187,500 conversion dollars attached to those transferred out units. We're going to pick up our 30,000 equivalent units down here. We're gonna take that times 30 cents per unit. And let's go ahead and see if that's right. So we're going to take all the costs we have to account for. We're gonna subtract what we transferred out, subtract what is left in ending whip, and that should give us zero. Now, if you accidentally picked up this number over here, 75,000 times 30, 30 cents a unit, you really want to do that check figure. That's incorrect. You have over-costed this by $13,500. In other words, you have applied $13,500 of conversion costs in excess of what we actually had. So that's a, a good reason to use your check figure. I'm going to put it back to the way it should be. $9,000. Our totals we're just going to add materials and conversion. Be careful not to pick up units when you do this. And we're going to add materials plus conversion. And then let's go ahead and do the check figure again. All the costs we have to account for, minus what we're transferring out, minus what's in ending whip. That looks good. Again, you want to do this check figure because if, for example, you got in a hurry and you hit auto sum on this and you summed all three of these, it's going to tell you you've applied 75,000 too many costs. And then you can go back and say, well, what did I do? Oh, that's the ending whip. I shouldn't have done that. So again, I'm going to put this back to the way it should be. The last thing we have to do is a journal entry. So what we're going to do for the journal entry is we're going to move it into second department whip. And how much are we going to move? What do you think? Okay, if you said $343,750, you would be correct. And then we're going to take it out of 
our first department whip, 343750 And let's go ahead and calculate the cost per unit transferred out. We're going to take total costs and divide it by total units transferred out. We get 55 cents per unit. And you can see that that is the same as adding up the two costs per equivalent units. Okay, so this is the end of this video and you have learned how to do process costing when materials are added at the beginning of the process, conversion is added evenly throughout, and we transfer goods to a second department. The ending whip balance in this problem is the $27,750. And that's the end of this video.